Today is Friday, and you are on the Daily Huddle. If you're here, I welcome you. And if you're Andrea, you're about to be abused. Good morning, Andrea. <laughs> hey, good morning, Zarel. I've got a question for you. What's up? What do you call an alligator detective? alligator detective i don't know sorrel what do we call them an investigator gator investigator <laughs> that's good that's good if you're seven year old laugh if you're 80 laugh too <laughs> Well, good morning again. Today is Friday, it's sunny outside, and uh, guess what, you are here. And uh, if you're here, it's not that you didn't have anything else to do. So I wanna welcome you. I wanna let you know how much the daily huddle depends on your presence and your participation to make itself real. So thank you for being here and welcome. Now, before I get started, I want to tease you a little bit with a little bit of what today is about. Catch it, your brain is doing it right now. It's either deleting, distorting, or generalizing everything I'm saying. And until I said that, you weren't aware of that. But now that you are, wait until the rest of the show. Brigitta is going to uncover the brain and give you access to the third law of success. So before we get started, though, I have a few questions. Good morning, Andrea. Again, what time is it? And who are you going to hug today? The time is now, Sorrel. And I'm going to hug my daughter, who is back from spring break vacation with her friends. So I'm going to do that a lot today. Oh, that's great. Cece, be safe out there. Tell me, where are you? And what are you grateful for? Oh, I'm right here right now, and I'm grateful that I'm here and get to serve somebody today. Thank you. That is awesome. CC, welcome. Thank you for being here. And we've got a question for you. My dear friend, Brigida, how are you? I am just the way I need to be. I am and, right here. And the way you say you are. That's Welcome true. to the Daily Huddle, Brigada. This is uh, the third rendition of uh, a series called The Laws of Success. Today, we dive into law of success number three. And before I give you the floor, Brigida, I want to say a little bit about you, just a tiny bit. You see, Brigida is uh, a business owner who chooses to live in America. She says, I am German by birth, American by choice. I thank you for making that choice, Brigida. You know, your presence in America makes America something worth being in. So thank you for being here. Brigida comes to us very qualified. She is the owner and founder of two educational institutions, one for children, a Montessori school, and one for adults called the Center of NLP. Now, Brigida, as a CEO, she is by trade a speaker and trainer and by heart design, CEO by passion, an executive board member of the International Coaching Federation in service of most of all, though, she is a wife and a mother at heart. Good morning, Brigida, and welcome back to the Daily Huddle. Good morning, Sorel. Good morning, Daily Huddle family. Thank you for having me. It is a beautiful day, not because the sun is shining, and it is shining, because we made it so, and we make it so. So thank you for allowing me to be here and to be of service to you and your beautiful family. 
Absolutely. We, we do get to say the way things are, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes. And uh, most, most people don't even realize that. Exactly. And uh, in your work at the center of NLP and ex specifically inside of today's question, uh, recovering from deletions, distortions, and generalization in your communications, uh, I imagine people will have an access to seizing and seeing how the brain works and using that to one's advantage, whether it's in a personal relationship, in business, or out in the world, about. So tell us, how do we oh, recover boy. from deletions, distortions, and generalizations? Okay, we're going to dive in the deep end today. So I sure hope, unless you're driving, I sure hope that you have something to write with and something to write on because you want to take notes. So deletions, distortions, and generalizations. That's already a mouthful. I want to I wanna rewind a little bit and maybe even go back to um, our last month's daily huddle that I did on success laws number two, the map of the territory. And before I go into that, I want to share with everyone what is neurolinguistic programming. What does that stand for? That's a mouthful all in itself. So it's it's ra rather simple. Neuro your brain, linguistic your communication, programming. You have an impact, an influence on your own behavior and on other people's behavior. And if you're not intentional about it, you're you're still going to have an impact. You're still even if you're not conscious about it, you're still going to have an impact on other people's behavior if you like it or not. So if you have the tools, which we're giving you, now you can be intentional. Now you can really be uh, a, an intentional communicator and bring quality information to whichever, um, whichever relationships you're building, because we're building relationships all the time. May it be personal relationships or business relationships. So this is not just only for business and it's very well used in business. And it's also great for personal relationships and uncovering where you might have limitations in your communication when communicating with your family, your kids, your partner, uh, the parent in the parent teacher conference the teacher in the parent-teacher conference, whatever it is that you do. All right, so let's jump right in and get started. I want to um, start out with, so today we're recovering the limitations as we are detecting deletions, distortions, and generalizations. And before I go into what does that even mean, Brigida, I wanna go into the human communications model. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go, that's better. The human communications model. As we uh, talked last month, there's an external event, but the external event does not necessarily represent what's truly happening internally because we're taking that external event in, inward through our senses. And now in our operating system, which is our brain, we are deleting, distorting, and generalizing information as they're coming at us. Um, who is it that's driving in the car? It was someone, Cece's driving in the car. So let me take Cece as an example. Cece's driving in the car. While I'm talking, she has other inputs around her. And there's about 2 million, everyone has about 2 million bits of information coming at them at any given moment. And if we would, um, take all of that information in, all of the cars driving by, uh, all of the traffic signs, all of the noises, all of the smells, all of the uh, perhaps even tastes that are in the air. If Cece would take, pay attention to all of them, she would completely and utterly freeze like each and every one of us would because it's just too much information. So our brain to cope with all of the information, all of the overflow of information, takes it in, deletes, distorts, and generalizes that information, and then it filters it 
through our memories. So we, we might have experienced something, Cece might have experienced something as she saw something on the street and it triggered a memory. So she now compartmentalizes, her brain compartmentalizes that in that little memory file. Or she will bring out an experience, oh, I've experienced this before, so it goes in this file. So she's generalizing that information and bundles it with other information. Um, she might delete information because they're just not necessary to her or um, she can't cope with it right now or it's just too much information altogether. So through the deletion, distortion, generalization, we now, and to take CC as an example, we make our own internal representation, which is not the exact thing that's happening outward. We make our own internal representation of what that looks, sounds, feels, uh, and, and tastes like. And that in return creates our frame of mind. It creates of how we feel. And that feeling shows up outward in our body language, with, which then in return shows up as our behavior to other people. So it might, we might all be experiencing the same thing, the same event, but we all through our own deletions, distortions, generalizations, which are limitations, we create our own internal representation. That's why no external event means the same thing for each person. And I like to say this uh, repeatedly because people um, like to simplify humans. Uh, we cannot be put in categories, which we are putting things in categories to simplify it. But at the core, as a unique person, you cannot be simplified. And I'm giving you more simple strategies and they will sink in more as you study them um, where you're gonna go, oh, when I use this, it'll actually have an impact. It'll have an impact in my results that I get. It'll have an impact in my life. It'll have an impact in my family. It'll have an impact in my business. So I, I wanna give you a quick uh, fun little story when I first, this was like 20 years ago, when I first came to the US and I built my first, I wanted to build my first website for my Montessori school. I had a visual in my head. I knew what I wanted to look like. I knew the feeling that I wanted to evoke. And with my own limitations, the person that I spoke to at that time, I did not have all of the strategies that I have today. I just kind of, did my very best in, in relaying with words of what I wanted. I didn't do a good job because the website that I got, this is not the actual website. I looked for the website. I don't have it. And I don't have any more pictures because it was a nightmare. The website that I got was just an absolute nightmare. And I got really, really angry at the person that was going to build the website. And at the end, now looking back with the resources that I have today, I can say that wasn't on him. That was all on me. That was my doing because I did not communicate clearly on what I was desiring to have. So when we're not getting the results that we desire, it's not on the other person. When the team is not doing what, what I want them to do, it's not on them. It's first and foremost, me as the team leader. It, it all comes back to leadership. So let's go more into delete, distort, and generalization. How is it showing up? Let's look at, I'm going to break down one example for each. Let's look at a simple deletion. Now know that there are, within the deletion category, there are seven subcategories. I'm only gonna bring you one today, okay? So this is a very simple deletion. I am uncomfortable. I am tired. I am fill in the blank. That is a simple deletion. And I'd like for you in the chat box, write out what comes up for you when you hear this, this statement, without judging it, we're not judging it, but what comes up for you in the statement of why could it be a deletion? What are we deleting here? 
I am uncomfortable. What are we deleting here in the chat box? The source of the discomfort. Exactly. So we're going to go into recovery as the next step. But I'm, I'm just asking you, so what do I mean by deleting? What are we leaving out? What are we not saying? Unresolved problems. Okay, that's a mind read. Okay, good. I just want to, I'm, I'm asking these questions and I will come back with an answer. I just want to get you involved and um, okay, good. We are deleting. We are leaving out information in our communication. So when I say when you're not getting the results, say you're working with a team, say you're, you're in a leadership position uh, for a team, a team of 10, and you want that team to do X dollars of sales by the end of this month. How are you setting up your team? How are you communicating and how are you becoming aware of your own limitations in your own communication as you're relaying the information to your team to set them up for success? Because what often happens when the leader is not um, aware of his or her own limitations in their communication, it can, they cannot relay what they want the team to do and therefore the team cannot go out and do a great job. And therefore, there's not going to be the sales numbers that they want in at the end of the month. So in our communication, I'm going to come back to the deletion, distortions, generalizations later, just dripping on you right now. And I just want you to think about what that could mean for you. Okay, so that was the deletion. I am uncomfortable. There's information missing in the statement. I'm going to come back to it. Distortion. The distortion um, in this case, and again, there's several subcategories, is we're making two different experiences as one. He always picks me, he hates me. So we're making one thing mean another. This is a distortion and we all have done it. That was a generalization, I'm gonna to come to that next. So we make one thing mean another thing. There are two different instances and we're bringing them together as one. That means we're distorting reality. And that can cause problems. So I'm going to come back to how do we recover from that? And then the presupposition, again, there are many, um, oh, I'm going to come to the generalizations as well. The presupposition is if my boss knew how much I suffered, she wouldn't do that. So if my boss knew how much I suffered, she wouldn't do that. There are, we are presupposing, we're assuming three things here that I'm suffering, my boss didn't know, or I think I don't know, and there's, and the boss has a behavior in some way. So my boss, if my boss knew how much I suffered, she wouldn't do that. So we're presupposing on three different levels within this communication. When you are aware of, and that's exactly why I'm, I'm sharing this with you, when you are aware of the limitations in our communication, you can recover from it or uncover them. And then the generalization, this is a universal quantifier. She never reads my emails. They, the, they, always, um, they are always on time. So we're making it be the same thing always. No one likes me. Every day the same. It's all the time, ever, ever, always, um, all of those generalizations. So we're, we're, when, we are, when we sense and detect that kind of communication in our own language, in other people's language, we can then start recovering from it. Because it's almost like this person is with their head against the wall, and that's how it is. There's no opportunity to see um, another avenue of this instance. But by recovering, we're actually taking a few steps back from the wall. And now we get to have an opportunity to look around and go, oh, there are other ways. 
There are other possibilities. There are other opportunities. Let's explore them. And when you can explore those other opportunities and possibilities, there can be change, not big change, but like a 1% change, a 1% shift, a 1% different point of view. It doesn't have to be 100%. It can be 0.1%. That's better than staying where you're at. So it's about the process. It's not perfection. Let's look at the recovery and recovering those deletions, distortions, and generalizations. And we do that with quality questions. And uh, we already had some great quality questions in here. So I wanna go back to exactly these questions, the, uh, these statements. And in the chat box, I'd like for you to help uncover or recover these limitations. Let's start with the deletion. I am uncomfortable. And if you don't wanna use the chat box, come on out, let's have a conversation. I am uncomfortable. How do you recover from this deletion, this simple deletion? Cece. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uncomfortable with um, communicating because I'm my communication skills need more developing. So when I want to say something that I think on the other side would hurt them, I get stuck and I don't say it. I'll okay, say I'll get, great. I'll get stopped by that and trying to say it in a way where the other person is not offended. So thank you. So I'm uncomfortable communicating with other people. My, my true authentic thoughts because I don't want to hurt it, hurt the other person or, or say the wrong thing. So yes. I'm thank you for thank thank you for that, CC. And the a recovery question when someone says I'm uncomfortable, CC, what's and CC already shared it with us. But for the sake of the the exercise, what are you specifically uncomfortable about? Or like Sorel said in the chat, what's making you uncomfortable now? So you're recovering the deletion. There is information that's missing in that statement of what specifically are you uncomfortable? And about whom are you uncomfortable? Or with whom are you uncomfortable? And when you can start, and, and, and Cece, and this is, I, I know not just for you, but I'm, I'm going to pick on you right now. Um, when you're communicating with others, you don't have to have an answer. You can ask great quality questions. And that opens up the communication for more specificity. So now you actually have something to work with. This morning, my husband uh, made a very simple deletion statement. And he asked me what I thought about it. And I said, you need to give me something to hold on to here. I have nothing to work with. It, it, it is just, it was just a blob of words, but I have nothing to work with here. So how often do you go in a conversation? You're like, uh, I think that's what she means by being uncomfortable, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to jump to conclusions. No, don't jump to conclusions. Ask a great question. What are you uncomfortable about? And then close your mouth. So what's making you uncomfortable now? About whom are you uncomfortable? About what are you uncomfortable? Um, that is one way that you can recover that deletion in someone's language and not jump to conclusion because quite frankly, we're not mind readers. Let's go to the next question. Gio, did you offer, do you want to offer any uh, insights on this or any question? I saw you come on. Giovanni. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, no. You this were is, leaning this is, this in. Is, uh... I, I was reading your body language. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, this is fascinating. You can continue. I, I love to get, um, I don't know if Sorrell, if you want to engage the community a little bit with some questions and answers. Yeah, this is the appropriate time to do that. Uh, you know, how, how would you recover from any of these? He always picks on me. He hates me. Okay, great. So how can you recover from that? He always picks me. He hates me. 
Now, um, is that a statement somebody's making to me or a statement I'm making to myself in my head? Either one. When you're Either making one. it to your, when you're making it to yourself, you know, and we all have that mind chatter. If you admit it or not, we all have it. But it is a, when we are aware of the communication that we have with ourselves or someone has with us, and we are aware that they are, there is a distortion in this case happening, we can then ask more quality questions. So if I'm saying this to myself, he always picks me. So he always picks me. He hates me. So, so hmm. has he I, ever picked I, I, me? I have a quality question. Was yeah. there ever a time when he didn't pick me? Exactly. And that, even and, if it was just once, it would help me recover from, from this, yeah. Yeah. And how do you know he hates you? How do you know it's hate? Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's admiration. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and and when he picks other people, does he then hate them too? See, now when we ask those questions, Sorel, and I love the question that you that you offered, it opens the up. It's it's with this statement, it's that's the fact, that's the truth, end of story, I'm out. There's no change. There's no, there's, there's it's it's burning the bridge from here. But when we start asking some really good questions. And allowing the person may be myself or the person that we're communicating with, it, it, offers, it offers an opportunity to ponder over, hmm, yeah, maybe, maybe it isn't all that black and white. Giovanni, you had your hand up. Yes, I'm yes. going to bring them all together. Yes, perfect. Sorry. Screen sharing, OK. I, I, what I see um, that I really um, uh, so, something to something that I'm present um, in, in this conversation is what you said at the end, which I thought it was really critical for me, right, to to capture, which is that this equivalences he always picks me. There, therefore, he must hate me. Uh, it's very important for me to see them as dangerous rather than um, to consider the possibility that they're dangerous statements for who I am and what I'm about and what, as a leader, what I want, what I want to create in others uh, and consider that possibility constantly rather than than fall for the uh, for the familiarity of my speaking. He, he must hate me. You know, he always speaks me. Uh, and then just say to myself, um, just say to myself, well, I don't really mean it. I mean, I'm just talking, mm -hmm. you know, like, of course I don't mean that. Like that familiarity, familiarity um, casualness, in, in my conclusions, in one's conclusions, then prevents me, prevents others to capture the danger of the equivalences that you're pointing to. That's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely danger because like I said, it, it, if you're not recovering, first of all, if you're not aware that these deletions, distortions, generalizations happen, then we cannot recover from them in our own language and in other people's language, and we're not getting to the point that we want to get to. So yes, they are very dangerous. I agree with you. Brigitte, at, at, at the risk of making a generalization, <laughs> I'm getting something here. Uh, could, could it be beneficial to generalize and say that as a human being, my brain is always deleting, distorting, and generalizing? That, and is, if a, that's that the is a case, generalization and that's true, yes. And if that's the case, then uh, my primary means of communicating 
is probably questions. They don't even have to be great. No, questions are great. Yeah. Questions, questions. And I'm going to, and that there's a little asterisk behind what you just said. And I'd like for you to stay clear just in the beginning of the mm -hmm. question why. Because when you when you are trying to recover, when you when you are detecting a limitation in someone's language and you ask a question, stay clear of why. Because stay when you, clear of the question why. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I said to myself, God, Brigitte hates me, and then I came up with a recovery question, why do you hate me? That wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would not work. You, you're now you're just pounding your head against the, that wall that you're standing in front of. But what makes you think Brigida hates you? And does she always hate you? Is it hate? Have you asked her? Oh. Huh. Phenomenal. Oh, so, Brigida, the time always flies on the daily huddle. <laughs> And it's uh, 32 after, and I want to give you the opportunity now to uh, wrap it up in a nice little box with a bow on top. Uh, what do you want to say to really anchor us as entrepreneurs, business people, family members, and our awareness that our brains delete, distort, and generalizes so that we are empowered going forward? What you think? You become what you feel, you attract, what you articulate, you generate, and what you imagine, you create. Wow. Drop the mic. That's right. <laughs> beautiful. That was so beautiful. Uh, thank you, Brigida. And uh, as always, folks, uh, thank you for being here. We're going to close today 